All right, the fish you buy at the grocery store might not be what you think, might not be what's on the label. That's according to a new report out just this morning. Oceana Canada tested more than 470 seafood samples from food retailers and restaurants right across the country, and they found that almost half, half were mis- Labeled. Joining us with more is Executive Director of Oceana Canada, Josh Lochran. Good to have you here this morning. Although the news is kind of bad, uh, first of all, when we say you know, fraudulent fish, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about any activity that misrepresents the fish that you buy. And that can either be putting misleading or incomplete information on the label, or more problematic, it's when this, it's actually a different species of fish which is substituted and sold as something else. Uh, it, and it could be things like uh, cutting in like a cheaper brand or saying that it's wild when it's actually farmed. Yeah, almost all the time it's economics that are behind this. So it's uh, instead of a, a wild salmon, it's a farm salmon. Instead of uh, expensive tuna, it's cheap catfish or something like that. So almost always it's substituting a uh, cheap alternative for an expensive fish. Josh, if I'm at home, how can I tell? Uh, really hard. This is supposed to be my business, and a lot of the time I can't. Wow. I can tell some of them, but really the answer is to have good traceability rules because it's impossible for the consumer to be able to be um, educated enough to tell some of these species from one another. All right, well, this is your report. How did this happen? Well, uh, we know when we look for seafood fraud, we find it. It's that simple. Uh, and it's because two real driving factors. One, seafood is a highly traded global commodity with really long supply chains. Uh, you can, a fish can be caught in Canada, sent to China for processing, back to the U.S. to be breaded, and come into Canada. And then because of the way our traceability or our labeling rules work, the place of origin for that fish would be listed as the United States because that's the last place that touched it. So you get a long, um, kind of opaque uh, value chain, and then you get really poor traceability and labeling standards, and now you've got the all the recipe for, uh, for mislabeling. We'll get to the fix in just a moment, but what are some of the negative consequences if you, I mean, other than the fact that you might be paying more for a cheaper brand of fish, are there health concerns? Well, as you said, the first is your wallet, or yeah. one of them is your wallet. You're not getting what you pay for. Two, there are health concerns. Um, for example, a lot of the white tuna that you buy uh, in sushi restaurants is actually Escolar, which is charmingly named the laxative of the sea, and oh. it's banned for sale in some countries. Uh, and amberjack is often substituted for um, uh, snapper, I think it is, um, and uh, the or yellowtail, it's, it's substituted for yellowtail, and that has a naturally occurring, can have a naturally occurring uh, toxin called ciguatera, which causes really debilitating neurological symptoms. So health uh, potential problems, um, your wallet, and also for the oceans too. I mean, this this. Uh, Mislabeling and substitution is how illegal fishing gets laundered into the market. So it undercuts uh, our uh, responsible and law-abiding fishermen who are actually, you know, um, deserve to get what they're paid. Is, is there one fix? Can we solve the problem somehow? The easiest fix uh, is to put in place boat-to-plate traceability. That means when the fish is caught, there's information that follows it, like what species it is, the scientific name, where it was caught and how it was caught, and it follows it at each step of the supply chain so that when it gets through to your plate, you know, you can trace it back all the way to its origin and be with good labeling so the information is there on the label as well. If that's there, then you can buy your fish confidently. You know, normally, Josh, in stories like this, we tell people to check the label, but in this case, you can't necessarily believe the label. Not always. Uh, you can, I mean, there's things you can do as a consumer. You can buy the whole fish, uh, less likely to be uh, substituted. Um, you can ask questions, uh, buy from a, you know, a, a fishmonger you trust, mm -hmm. uh, look for a good label like Marine Stewardship Council, which is less likely to be substituted. But in the end, if we want seafood we can trust, it requires good traceability standards. It's a surprising study. Thanks for bringing it to us this morning, Josh. My pleasure. All right. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.